This one is 3.4. Here we have a cantilevered beam which has two point loads, one here and one here. So from the reactions, we are going to get a reaction in y direction and a moment in the z direction. For analysis, we need two cuts in this case. So your cut one is here and cut two is here. So we can draw the free body diagram for cut one. So if I go for cut one, I'll have this left part and the right part coming from here. On the left part, we are going to have these reactions R, Y, M, Z. And since we have a positive phase opened up here, we are going to have your V1 and MB1. And this phase, we are going to have V1 acting downwards and MB1 going the other way. Now on this, we have a force P acting here and a force P acting right here. In terms of distances, your cuts are always made at a distance of X. So this is x right here so overall length is l so this becomes l minus x since this one is a this has to be l minus x minus a so we can analyze any one of these parts so let's go and analyze this part right here so you will notice that v1 acting down plus p acting down is balancing this p here so this gives us a value of v1 equals to zero similarly if i do movement mb1 about this point plus p coming from here distance is l minus x will balance this one here which is anti-clockwise so p times l minus x minus a equals to zero you can see this pl cancels out with this pl this minus px cancels out this plus px so overall your mb1 value is so this is plus a so minus p times a so this is the value of bending moment in section one now when we go for cut 2, so your cut 2 is going to be somewhere here in this manner. Now I will draw only forces on the right part here because that is easier, only one force is there. This is a negative phase, so we have V2 here and V2 here. Distance here is X from here to the cut, so this becomes again L minus X. So we can do the force balance for this part right here, so we get v2 plus p equals to 0 so this gives us v2 equals to minus p and if i take moments about this point we get mb2 plus p times l minus x equals to 0 and that gives us the value of mb2 which is p times x minus l here so we got the value of v1 equals to 0 here mb1 is this your V2 is minus P here and MB2 is right here. So let's try plotting the shear force and bending moment diagram. So let's say this one is your shear force. So remember this is your cut 1 and this section is your cut 2. So here we are going to plot your V1 and MB1 and here we will plot V2 and MB2. So in this segment if you notice the value of V1 is 0. So from here to here, we are going to maintain a value of 0 here. So this is how we get it. And your V2 value is minus P. So after this, we are going to go down, maintain a value of minus P here. So that's how your shear force diagram looks. So this is your Vx right here. Now just below this, if we plot your bending moment, Mbx. So let's complete this so your mb1 value right here is minus pa so here we are going to plot this as minus pa and here we have mb2 which is p times x minus l now there are two points for this mb2 where we can evaluate this so value of mb2 at x equals to l is zero here and this one is the x equals to l minus a so at that point, if we substitute x equals to L minus A here, we get MB2, which is minus PA, which is the same value here. So at x equal to L, we have 0. So I can connect these two. So this is your bending moment diagram. And if you highlight the boundary here, this is how the diagram looks for this. Now, just to give you another simple way of doing this, 
without doing all these cuts because we have done three problems so far so by this time we should be getting comfortable with the cut method so now this new method i call this uh, basket method okay so in this so in this basket method what we do is we go to the right end of the beam and you imagine that you are holding a basket in your hand and in that basket you are collecting only positive forces so whenever you get a force which is positive in nature you collect it in your basket and if it's a negative force that means you are throwing away that force from your basket okay so let's start from this point right here when i reach this point here notice that i get a force which is acting downwards that means i have a negative force so in my basket i'm going to get a force that is minus p and this force minus p is going to be same force till i reach this point so i can draw my basket value from here to here which is minus p now suddenly when i reach this point i get this new force which is a positive force p so i already had a minus p in my basket now i have a plus p so both of them combine together and the new force value that i get is your zero force value from here to here and from when i start from here till here i don't get any other force here so that's why i maintain this value here that's how we can find out the shear force in a simple manner by just counting the forces that are acting in the positive direction walking from this side right here so this is your shear force now for the bending moment what do we do we look at the area under the curve that we have in this shear force diagram so when i start walking from this side what do i see this area under the curve is increasing every time i walk more i am going to add more and more area there but notice this area is in the negative direction so if i am starting here initially i had zero area then i started increasing my area when i am walking along this side here right by the time i reach here i covered this complete rectangle so what will be the area total inside this if this width is a this height here was minus p so total area i'll cover from this point to this point is minus p a so at this point right here i have covered the area minus p a so the value of bending moment at this point is going to be minus p a after that since the value is zero here i am not adding anything to the area i still have this minus pa in my basket in terms of area so i'm going to maintain that value till i reach the end of the beam so that's how your bending moment diagram is going to be looking so this right here is your bending moment diagram for this beam so this is your mbx so in this method if there are simple forces that you can just count by simply walking on this beam from the right side you collect all the positive forces get your shear force and then look for the area under the curve and that area under the curve is going to give you the value of your bending moment and you can plot it in a simple manner